call to the honourable member for Kuyong. Thank you, uh, Speaker. My question is for the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, I understand that last night you attended a $5,000 per head post-budget dinner, which was hosted by the Federal Labor Business Forum. For the benefit of the House, were any fossil fuel industry lobbyists or other fossil fuel industry representatives in attendance? Just before the Prime Minister answers that question, I do have some difficulty with the phrasing of that question in result that it does potentially relate to party affairs that the, the Prime Minister can't be asked about. So I'm just going to ask the member for Kuyong to rephrase her question to ensure that it is in within standing orders. Thank you, Speaker. Okay. My question is for the Prime Minister. Uh, I understand that you attended a $5,000 a head post-budget dinner last night. Can you tell the House whether any fossil fuel industry lobbyists or other fossil fuel industry representatives were in attendance? That question is barely within the standing orders. I'll allow the Prime Minister to answer the question, but it, he'll obviously be able to answer only parts of the question that are relevant to the standing orders. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. I've stood and had the great honour of being the Australian Labor Party candidate in 10 elections. During those 10 elections as a candidate for Grainler, I have spent more, less money less money on those 10 campaigns than the member for Kuyong did in her one. <laughs> Order. Give a call. Give a Order. No. Order. The member for Hasluck will resume her seat. Order. When the House comes to order, Member for Kuyong, just as any other member is entitled to raise a point of order, the Prime Minister has concluded his answer, so it obviously can't be on the point of order on relevance, but I'll hear from the member for Kuyong. Well, my issue, Mr Speaker, is that the Prime Minister has not in any way addressed the substance of my question. Resume your, resume your, resume your seat. Order. Order. There was no point order. There was no point of order, and it's getting close to abuse of the standing orders of abusing standing orders in that way. Order. The leader of the opposition will cease objecting because I want to hear from the member for Hasluck. Yeah. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. How does the budget help make a future in Australia by investing in the jobs, industries, and opportunities of tomorrow? And what hurdles were overcome? Call to the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank you to the member for Hasluck uh, for her question and for the way that she represents a great community from out west here uh, in the People's House. Uh, Mr Speaker, as we said a moment ago, you know, the primary purpose in the near term in this budget is to help people who are doing it tough and to get the budget in much better nick as well. But one of the really important things about last night's budget is it do doesn't neglect our responsibilities to the future. And the budget was all about a vision for making the most of this remarkable opportunity that we have as a country in our industry, in our energy, in our resources, in our skills base and as, our, as an attractive place for investment. The world is changing, Mr Speaker, and the pace of that change is accelerating and we need to change with it if our people are to be the primary beneficiaries, not victims, of all of that churn and change. And the global transition, the transformation to net zero, is the biggest change in the global economy since the Industrial Revolution. And our $22.7 billion Future Made in Australia package is all about maximising the opportunities that that will bring for every single part of the country, whether it's out west, in the honourable members' community, or indeed right around Australia, Mr Speaker. We want to make ourselves an indispensable part of the global net zero economy and the future made in Australia investments in the budget last night will help us do it. It will help us maximise the opportunities and secure Australia's place in the world with an overwhelming focus, not on replacing private investment in our economy, but facilitating more private investment. 
Our plan for a future made in Australia is all about attracting that investment. It's all about making Australia a renewable energy superpower. It's about value adding to our resources and strengthening our economic security. It's about improving our innovation and our science and our digital capabilities. And it's about investing in our people and places. This is how we modernise our economy and maximise the opportunities of the future. And not for its own sake, but so that we can deliver a new generation of prosperity for more of our, more of our people. A future defined by good, secure, well-paid jobs, not just in some parts of our country, but right around our country, in our suburbs and regions, Mr Speaker. And that's why a future made in Australia is a big priority of this government, not at the expense of our efforts to ease cost of living or to get the budget in better nick, but in addition to that. And that's because we understand on this side of the House that we have generational responsibilities to our people to create a new generation of prosperity, which is just as good as the past one, but which recognises the way that the world is changing and we need to change with it.